I was on Facebook on a group for astrophotography and somebody showed how to use a flat LED screen to make a light source out of that you could take pictures of so that you can make flat frames for astrophotography. So I got myself one of those. Here's what you get in the mail. You get this about A4 screen, has a USB cable, comes with it, you give it 5 volts and you have one, two, three settings and off. It's not quite what I expected. It has a structure. It has like a grid. It might be flat but not where the dots are. So some sort of smoothing is necessary to use this as a flat screen. I ordered it from Banggood and it arrived alright. Uh, it was fine. Um, the ad shows uh, sort of three panels at the bottom is supposed to show the different brightness levels. You cannot see the structure there that is evident when, once you have the device. So I set it up and started taking some pictures. Here's one from straight overhead uh, but filling the entire frame. I used the iPad, just the iPad camera, just to start somewhere. Uh, there should be vignetting in that image. Here the screen is at a distance so the vignetting should be less of a problem. We can analyze that. So why are we going to do all this? Uh, it's to do with producing flat frames that um, correct a camera system, sensor and optics, for variations across the, f the frame of the, the image you're taking. You don't want your sensor to have variations, and they do in sensitivity, which will cause an image of a perfectly uniform source to look like it's got variations. Parts of it is dark, others are not dark. You can remove that. You can also take care of the effects of vignetting, which is an optical lens effect. The corners of the field look darker than the center. What you do is you generate a flat field and then you divide all raw images by that flat field and what you will get are images suitable for photometry. Here is such a, a flat field from an, uh, a real telescope uh, on top of Mauna Loa on Hawaii. It's a small telescope. It has a CCD camera. The patterns you see in this image are the result of taking an image of something that was just a, a white surface, a very bright white surface, even. Uh, what you see are some dark dots. They are dust specks on the actual CCD detector surface, so they obviously cast a shadow. You see some diagonal bands which are um, grinding patterns in the actual surface of the silicon uh, substrate that forms the, actual, the, the CCD detector itself. Now this looks terrible, but in fact the difference in brightness or sensitivity of revealed by this uh, flat frame from the darkest spot to the brightest stripe is less than a percent. It implies that any image taken with this camera would have such patterns built in because of the sensitivity variation. But if you divide such an image by this flat frame, those variations will come out and you can do better photometry across the frame of such an image. But these are defects in the sensor and in, in the dust on the sensor. That, that's not the point of this video. The point is that to get pictures like the one you're looking at, you have to have a good flat light source that I'm hoping to make from this LED screen I've shown you. So that's the point of this video, onwards to the light source. Here is the first flat field I took just from straight overhead filling the whole frame. As you can see, you can see the, the raster from the screen and also some moiré which has to do with the interaction between that pattern and the layout, the, the resolution of the screen, I think. Let's smooth this first. By the way, I'm using a program called ImageJ, which is very suitable for these sorts of operations. Um, We'll smooth the image and you can see it's, it, this is the f image of the so-called flat screen. It looks kind of flat. If you move in this area here, you can up here in the bar above see that I find values near 115, 117. 
But if I go in this corner, I find values near 90. So there's at least a 10-20% gradient in how bright it is from side to side. I can show that even clearer by doing an uh, enhanced contrast. And you can see, whoa, that image is not flat. It's very much brighter in one corner than in the other. So we can try to understand where those variations come from. Are they in the screen or are they because I took a picture of a screen? I.e., is it the camera giving this distortion or is it the screen itself? Here's the second flat screen image I took, the one that was at a distance and filled about one ninth of the whole image frame. Uh, I've smoothed it and I'm looking at the brightness variations. It looked brightest in the middle to me and in the bar above you can see we're reaching into the 117s. Well, there's a 120, 121, 22 over here. In this corner we're in the 105s. Up here we're in the 80s, 90s. 110s. So there's certainly a center to some corners gradient of 10% and one corner is really dark. It's down in the 80%. It's not the same pattern however as we saw um, in the previous image. Whoops. It's a different pattern. Some of this is due to the interaction of the moiré of the screen on the LED flat screen and the resolution of this screen and the choices are made for averaging, smoothing the image. You can see the contour levels here. But it's not the same pattern. I recognize the dark corner, but the other image was bright up here. This one is not. So what's different? Well, it's a different image taken at a slightly different time and with different geometry. I moved the camera and I took it from a different distance. At this point in time I decided to get a diffuser in front of the screen that would get rid of the strong raster pattern and also help smooth out irregularities. So I got a, an A4 sheet of uh, translucent, uh, not transparent, but translucent uh, acrylic. I'll show you what it looks like later and took three pictures you see them here the first one is the screen as we've seen it before without the the diffuser in front second one is where the diffuser is placed on top of the screen so touching it and you can see there's some of the structure bleeds through this dark area which is evident up here comes through and then I took a third picture where the diffuser was a distance in front about 10 centimeters in front of the uh, LED screen. So I have these three pictures and I analyze them. Let's take a closer look at the last of those pictures. That is the one where the diffuser is about 10 centimeters in front of the LED screen and see if we can understand how to separate effects of vignetting, which is an optical effect, has nothing to do with the source, from whatever signal there is in the irregularities of the source which is our ultimate goal because in this video we want to see how flat a source can you make if we can make a really flat one we can make nice flat screens but the optics is adding a signal of its own namely vignetting so here is a segment of the last picture you saw I've cut off the edges to avoid the images of, of books and stuff that was nearby this is uh, maybe 90% of the area of the last image you saw we are going to fit that with a, a surface. Um, a polynomial surface. We're going to go to second order in X and Y. And it looks like that. You can clearly see it's, the fitted surface is bright in the center and dark in the, in the sides. And that's vignetting. But that's the fitted. How about the original? Well, if we briefly enhance the contrast, you can see that it too is like that. It's bright here, which is very near the center, uh, optical center of the image. That's a straight line into the lens and onto the sensor. Out here you have edge effects because they're simply at an angle with the center of the optical system. 
So you will get a foreshortening of those areas and they therefore contribute less light. Before we can divide one by the other, we have to back out of this transform. There we are. Now what happens when we take this image and divide by that image? Uh, we do that in the image calculator. So the original image divided by the second order fit. And here I'd like to point out it's important to make a 32-bit result. Otherwise you will have rounding of integers problems. Here we are. This is the result of dividing the original image by the other image, the, the, the fitted surface. It looks kind of rough. Um, let's see if we can get a histogram for this that helps us understand what we're seeing in that ratio image. Um, the mean is 1, which we expect because it's an image divided by its least squares fitted surface, so the mean is 1 for all over all the pixels. The standard deviation is just under 1%, it's 0.009. So relative to the mean, which is 1, it's 0.9%. This tells us how much of the structure could be non-symmetric, non-smooth things like the vignetting. How much could be variations in the field itself because of poor illumination or the LED screen behind actually being an uneven and poor source of light. So it's reduced to a problem less than 1% once you get rid of the vignetting. Let's try to fit another surface, perhaps of higher or uh, degree. Uh, polynomial surface fit. Let's go to third order. There it is, and let's divide the original by that. Again, getting the 32-bit result. Here it is. It kind of looks the same before I recognize that area there and the sort of mottled stuff in the middle. Let's look for a histogram of this. So with third order, you're still getting mean one, but now slightly less, 0.87%, which is still basically 0.9. And you could play this game going to, to higher orders. Uh, in the end, you remove even the smallest bump with a 57th order polynomial. It also takes all day to fit that. So we will not consider that. We will just uh, stick with this idea. Uh, we will uh, collect the numbers for the three images, the one without a diffuser, the, the one with the diffuser on top of the screen, and the, this one where the diffuser is 10 centimeters in front and compare results. Here are the results of all of that. Uh, I'm giving the ratio of standard deviation to mean in the image you get when you divide the image by its second order fitted polynomial surface. That gets rid of the vignetting effect. If you use the LED screen without a diffuser, you have 3% structure. When the diffuser is on in contact with the LED screen, you have 2% structure. When the diffuser is 10 centimeters in front of the LED screen, you have 1% of structure. And that's to be compared to doing nothing, no division by anything, just the raw image and asking for the standard deviation and the mean value and taking the ratio, you see it's 15%. So getting rid of the vignetting is an important thing for constructing flat screens at least with an iPad, which has extreme vignetting because it's such a wide field. Right, so in the end, what have I shown? I have tried to show how you can take one of these, which is a, an A4 sort of sized LED flat screen. Unfortunately, with this raster pattern on it, and try to turn it into a source of flat light, meaning very little gradient from side to side. As you can see in this corner, there's definitely gradients in this frame, although it doesn't look too unflat if you just look at it like this. If you want to get rid of the raster, you can use one of these, which is essentially just a sheet of um, milky acrylic bought from an art supply shop. If you put that in front, you get something that is much flatter. And if you put it a distance in front, perhaps like that, 
you get something that is very flat in the illumination sense. You can get a field, a light field here, that is flat to about 1%. That is, if you remove the inevitable effect of vignetting, which is the optical effect from the lens alone, which is not the point of this video. The point was how flat a light source can you make and you can get to 1%. Perhaps you can do better. So let's see how I do in the future. You can see where this is headed. It's headed towards some sort of light box and it might end up as a whole RAM source. Let's see.